Hey everyone, this week is all about charging, more specifically a review of OpenEVSE. Now, before we get started, I'd just like to clarify that this video is a sponsored video because the kind folks at OpenEVSE provided me with a complete OpenEVSE kit as well as some other bits and bobs to experiment with for the purposes of, well, making this video. With that out of the way, some of you are probably wondering, well, what is OpenEVSE or maybe even what is an EVSE? So I'll start there. EVSE stands for Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment and is basically the more technical name for a level one or level two EV charging station or charging cord. As I'm sure you know, when you're charging your EV using AC, you're actually using the car's onboard charger to convert that AC into DC to feed to the battery. EVSEs are kind of like smart power cords. They provide safety features like ground fault detection, they interrupt the flow of current to the vehicle whenever it's being plugged in or unplugged, and they also have a pilot signal that is sent to the car to let it know what the maximum current is that it can pull at any given time uh, from that particular charging point. Now that you know what an EVSE is, Open EVSE is an open source hardware and software project for charging electric vehicles. This is what the completed kit looks like, and inside of each of these charging stations is a control module, like this guy right here, that is the brains of the whole thing. Keep in mind that you can get everything from individual parts to complete kits to fully assembled charging stations from OpenEVSE, but today I'm going to be looking at one of their kits. This OpenEVSE Advanced Series Kit Bundle comes with pretty much everything you need to get started. It comes with the OpenEVSE enclosure, a metal back plate that all the components mount to, the OpenEVSE control module, an LCD screen, the OpenEVSE Wi-Fi module, a 50 amp contactor, ground bar, cable glands, a button for directly interfacing with the OpenEVSE, all of the nuts, screws, and standoffs you need, zip ties to tidy up the wiring, and a couple CT coils. The one on the right handling your ground fault detection, and the one on the left handling current measuring. Oh, and not pictured here for space reasons is the charging handle and the input power cord. The specific kit that I'm building here is a little dated. Judging by their website, they've made a product revision since I received this sample for review, and it should be even easier to build now than before because you aren't gonna have to deal with a bunch of individual wires. They've actually created a connector block that already has all the wires uh, set up for you. So the newest kits will be even quicker to put together. Assembly is really straightforward and doesn't require any special electronics knowledge or tools beyond basic screwdrivers, wire strippers, wire cutters, that kind of thing. You don't have to do any soldering, or any fancy stuff to get this thing together. Detailed step-by-step -step assembly instructions are available on the OpenEVSC website, so I suggest taking a look at those to help you decide whether a kit or a pre-built is right for you. Once you have everything put together and powered up, if you have the Wi-Fi module, uh, OpenEVSC will create its own Wi-Fi network and then display an IP address on the LCD. What you want to do is log into that Wi-Fi network, navigate to the IP address it displays, and then configure it to log into your normal Wi-Fi. It's a simple process and not really that different from setting up some other IoT devices. The J1772 charge handle that this OpenEVSC kit came with is nicely made, very easy to use, has a nice long, thin, super flexi cable, and that's accomplished by using parallel conductors instead of just, you know, really big fat conductors inside the cable. And an important detail for a Tesla owner like me is that it plays nice with Tesla's J-plug to Tesla adapter when using the one-hand operation trick. When charging, OpenEVSC will show the current being passed to the car on the LCD, as well as the total energy sent to the car during that charging session, which is updated in real time. The backlight color of the LCD also changes depending on the state that the OpenEVSC is in. It's green when it's idle, it goes to kind of a yellow-green when it's connected to a car but not really doing anything, changes to blue when you're in the middle of a charging session, and it can change to purple when it's asleep, or red when there's a fault. So even with a quick glance, you can have an idea of what your charging station is doing. OpenEVSC's single button interface is simple and easy to use, employing a series of short and long button presses to navigate the different menus and options. The downside, however, is that the system is a little slow, 
So if you happen to step past the option you're looking for, it can take a little time to get back to it. Slow or not, the interface does allow you to adjust most of the EVSC settings without having to resort to connecting to it via Wi-Fi. So you can go through here and set uh, the maximum current that it will provide and, and a bunch of other things. With other EVSCs having come down significantly in price over the last five years or so, there is the question of what does Open EVSC offer that others don't at a similar price point? And well, see, I've got to show you the software now because what it gives you is information, control, and integration with projects like Open Energy Monitor. Here we have the Open EVSC Wi-Fi control panel, which, by the way, is mobile friendly. So if you want to view this on your phone or tablet or something, it will work just fine. The first thing you'll note right up here is the status of the EVSC showing not connected, which right now it's not connected to an EV. And you've got this uh, colored ring around the status box that's showing green. That actually matches the color of the backlight on the Open EVSC's display. So when it's disconnected, this shows green, just like the backlight and it's kind of a yellowish color when it is connected to a car but not doing anything. When you're charging, it turns blue, and if there's an error, it turns red. In addition to the color quick reference, you get real-time information about the current being passed to the car, which right now is zero, uh, the total session energy, so for any given charging session, it will in real time count uh, the amount of energy being sent to the car. So for me, the last session uh, that I used this for, it uh, put 18.03 kilowatt hours into the car, and then it shows the elapsed time for the charging session over here. In the setup box, you can set the date and time for your EVSE, either manually or you can just leave it in the automatic mode. Uh, service level is just to determine whether it's acting as a level one or level two charger. It's best just to leave that in auto. Uh, max current can be selected here. And what this is doing is basically changing the pilot signal that's being sent to the car, which governs how much current the car will pull at any given time. Um, and with Open EVSE, you can set a value anywhere between 6 amps uh, and 80 amps. Though, if you're going to set it any higher than 40 amps, uh, make sure that your Open EVSE charging station was built to deliver that kind of current. Uh, this kit I'm working with here is only intended for 40 amps continuous on a 50 amp circuit. Um, if you wanted to go higher, you'd have to replace uh, the contactor and so the wiring, and you'd have to change the charge plug. Um, since the, uh, the cable and that charge handle are only good, I think, to 50 amps. Um, so you'd have to change out some parts, but the point is that the controller is capable uh, of handling an 80 amp charger if that's what you want it to be. Over here in charging options, you can start, stop, pause charging sessions. Uh, because I don't have a car connected, I can't access these menus, um, but uh, what you can do is you can set a time limit for a charging session. Like say you only want to charge for an hour or only charge for two hours or whatever, you can set that here. You can also, interestingly, set an energy limit. So if you only want Open EVSC to deliver, say, 5 or 10 or 15 kilowatt hours to a car, you can set that energy limit in here, and that's really neat. You can also set the usual stop and start timers here. Um, a lot of EVSCs have this functionality. I have the display mode set to simple right now, which is the default, but let's go into advanced mode. In advanced mode, you get a little extra information, like the total energy that the charging station has delivered since last reset, and in this case, that's 795.22 kilowatt hours. You also get live feeds from the Open EVSC sensors. So there's the uh, current pilot signal setting, the real-time feed for the current being delivered to the car, which is also up here, uh, as well as feeds from its internal temperature sensors. Scrolling down here, you can see the status of Open EVSC's various safety features. Uh, these can be toggled on or off using the single button interface directly on the Open EVSC. Let's jump on over to the system tab. In the system tab, you can set up an administrator username and password for your Open EVSC if you want to protect it on your network. You can update the Wi-Fi module's firmware or force a factory reset of the Wi-Fi module, which will clear out all of the Wi-Fi setup information and that sort of stuff. Um, and then you get your Wi-Fi setup information right over here, along with a uh, signal strength. There's a developer mode switch over here, but I'll get back to that in a moment. Let's move on to the Services tab. The Services tab is where you can link your Open EVSC to something like Open Energy Monitor, Ohm Connect, things like that. You just plug in all your configuration information in this tab. But let's go back to that Developer mode. When you enable Developer mode, you'll see you get this RAPI tab show up. Go ahead and click it, and you're presented with, hmm, this. You get a complete list 
of get commands and set commands, as well as system functions. In the past, you used to have to directly interface with your OpenEVSC module and send these commands via command line. Now, it's actually built right into the web portal, which is really, really cool. Most people probably won't have much use for this, but I found it really useful because it meant it was very easy for me to remote into the EVSC um, and issue commands to it to, for example, adjust the ammeter scale, because I was noticing that the power value that it was displaying, the kilowatt being passed to the car, uh, was reading low based on um, a clamp meter. So I was able to log into this on my phone while I was in the garage and send commands to the OpenEVC control module to shift the ammeter scale to make it more accurate. Like I said, really cool, but let's move on to Open Energy Monitor. I'm not gonna get super into Open Energy Monitor in this video, but what I will say is that OpenEVSE can interface um, with either a local uh, installation of Open Energy Monitor, so if you have like an Emon Pi or something like that that you're using to monitor your home energy usage or something, uh, you can interface with that. And when you have it linked to uh, a local installation like that with data feeds coming in about your house usage and if you have solar and all that, um, you can do really cool, powerful things like have your Open EVSC communicate with the Emon Pi and dynamically adjust the pilot signal of the EVSC to match like your solar output, for example. Open EVSC can also integrate with the Open Energy Monitor installation that's on the Open EVSC project servers. So you can create an account with them for free and then link your charging station to their server uh, to do all the data logging. And that's what you're looking at here and what I'll be talking about. It's worth pointing out that I've been assured by the people at Open EVSC uh, that none of the data that's collected here from users is shared with third parties or sold, so that's not really an issue. So this here's the inputs page. This is basically all the data that's being fed from OpenEVSC uh, to this Open Energy Monitor account uh, on the OpenEVSC servers. And what you can do is you can log these values, uh, you can configure and log these values to the feed, which we'll just go to the feeds here. Okay, so here we have the actual log data. Things are a little more recognizable here with their, their output values, and what you can do is you can take these feeds um, and build that data into uh, like a dashboard display, so it'll give you graphs and stuff. Uh, so for example, if I go over here to apps, uh, I already have the OpenEVSC app in here set up. So here, for example, is my charge history with this, uh, this charging station. So it's by day and in kilowatt hours, so I can scroll over and see uh, how much energy I've been using to charge my car by the day. You can change this to the week scale if you just want to see one week. You can go to all time. If you're really into data collection and monitoring your energy usage and stuff, um, then you'll probably be spending a fair amount of time figuring out all the little quirks of Open Energy Monitor. Um, it'll do a lot of neat things, but like with most open source software, uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world to figure out, and the documentation could be better. So yeah, OpenEVSC has a lot to offer and I really do like it. And, and I'm not just saying that because they provided me with a free kit. Uh, for those who've been watching me for a while, you guys know that I've been using OpenEVSC to charge my electric cars since, uh, well, since I had my Leaf, which was you know before I even had the, the Model S and it's, it's been great. I even made a video about my custom OpenEVSC build, which was featured at the start of this video. Link to that is in the description below. As with everything, there are some negatives. The OpenEVSC enclosure, for example, is fairly small, which is good from a portability standpoint, but it means that there isn't a lot of room inside to work with when you're putting it together, and that's kind of a pain. Granted, I didn't exactly do myself any favors by not trimming the wires while I was building the kit, but that should be much less of a concern with the newer kits because of the prefab connector block. The features that have been added to OpenEVSC through the inclusion of the Wi-Fi module are really cool. I love the web portal, it's well organized, and provides you with a lot of information and control over the charging station. The only software detail that I'm not particularly thrilled with is Open Energy Monitor, and that's not the fault of OpenEVSC. Like I mentioned earlier, we are dealing with open source software here, and um, it doesn't always provide the greatest user experience. With Open Energy Monitor, regardless of whether you're working with a local installation or one of the free accounts through the OpenEVSC website, it's not exactly the easiest thing in the world to set up, and I think that there's definitely a group of users who would find it very intimidating, especially given the lack of simple step-by-step -step instructions to walk them through it. Anyway, I guess my point is that all of the software that's actually done on, on like the OpenEVSC side of things is pretty good and easy to work with. Is an OpenEVSC kit right for everyone? Probably not, but you guys know I'm really into DIY stuff and I, I feel like if I built it, I can fix it, and that's one of the things that really appeals to me when it comes to OpenEVSC. 
I also like customizing things. But even if a kit isn't right for you, like I mentioned earlier, you can get pre-built charging stations from OpenEVSE and their user support is excellent. You can just shoot them off an email if you're having problems with it and they'll get back to you quickly and help you resolve it. So that's about it for this video. I know that there are a ton of options out there when it comes to EV charging and I hope that maybe you've learned something today about an option you didn't know much about before. If you're interested in learning more about the OpenEVSC project, there's a link to their website in the video description below. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to rate and subscribe, and I'll see you later.